We are going to see the King soon and very soon. We are going to see the King soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to see the King. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is there, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I read you Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 16. Let the Lord have a blessing and adhering to his word and application to your soul. Most gracious turn of Father God, we come to you this morning, Father, with thanksgiving and love in our heart, thanking you, dear Father, for this day and most of all our health and strength. Dear Lord, we ask you, Father, be with us today, our Father, as we turn on and learn more and more about thee, our Father. We ask you, our Father, be with us, our Father, that we may share the word to somebody who has lost today, our Father, that don't know you, our Father. We ask you, our Father, be with them at this time, our Father, we going through this corporate situation, our Father, that we know that you are still in charge. Father God, bless us, be with us, our Father, as we pray thee, our Father. Strengthen those who are sick and shedding, those who are in bereavement. And we ask thee, our Father, just to strengthen this whole union that we're going through, our Father, as we know in our Father that you are our God, you are our leader, you are everything, our Father. So right now, dear Father, we just want to say thank you, thank you. In advance, our Father, we thank you, our Father, for all you have done, what you want to do. Father God, this is my prayer this morning. We ask all these blessings in thy Son, Jesus' name, for Christ's sake, we do pray to you, Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, before we get started, our message is Ordinance of the Church, Baptism and Communion. I want to do an altar prayer before I do that. This has been heavy on my heart this morning. Pray for me, oh my brother, when you kneel at the altar, don't forget to pray for me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you once again. Father, we come to say, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Because yes. without that, we are nothing and we can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Father, your love enfolds us. Your grace covers us. And your mercy fits every situation that we have. And Father, I come to ask you to touch the sick everywhere. Yes. Father, it seemed like every report that I got was somebody that has fallen ill for one mm -hmm. reason or the other. Mm -hmm. The COVID has taken so many, and there's so many side effects that's causing sickness, physical sickness, mental sickness. But Father, we know that you are the healer and you will heal because yeah. you're the mom and Gilly. And mm -hmm. Father, I asked you to go with the Curry family this morning, mm -hmm. as I know you will. Father, go with us as we walk this journey. You have walked us with us before. Mm -hmm. And I have strong faith you will walk it with us again. Yeah. As you walk with everyone that needs you, because you are a prayer hearing and you are loving and a prayer answering God. 
And yeah. Father, you are God that is no respect to person. Because mm -hmm. whatever you do for one, Lord, you will certainly do for the other. Because we are all yeah. are your created children. Then, Father, I ask you to touch every heart, touch every mind, and every soul, that they will recognize and turn back to you that you are the God of our creation. You mm -hmm. are the God that sustains all. And you are the God, the Father, that gave your Son, Jesus Christ, who willingly mm -hmm. gave his life on the cross, yes. that all who believe in him will be saved and spend eternity with him. And Father, we thank you because you gave us your spirit, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit who dwells in every one of us who believe. He is to lead us and he guides us. He is our heavenly roadmap, our compass that directs us. Then Father, when we need a comfort, he so readily comforts. And Father, we need comfort in the day because there's so much anxiety going on in the world. It's all perpetuated by sin, hate, and jealousy. And Father, those things are not of you. And what is of you is love, compassion, and care. But Father, we're asking for your peace this morning because we know that your peace transcends all of this other hatred and all of this other jealousy that's playing, played out daily in our society. And Father, we are holding fast and believing completely that in your time, you're gonna move jealousy, hatred, and you're gonna replace it with love, peace, and compassion. Yes. And Father, we ask that you give us the strength to endure until at your appointed time you make the change. We know that you are because you are an unchangeable God. And just as you made changes in the biblical days, you're going to make changes in the age of grace. Then, Father, speak through me as I bring your message this morning. Yes, and Father, sir. don't forget the rest of the churches and the leaders that you have placed over the churches. Yes. Father, let them teach nothing but the unadulterated God, the word of God, because that's what is needed. Then touch everybody's heart, that who was in the church, that they be the church. Mm -hmm. And Father, we just thank you in advance for answering this prayer. Lord, as we are praying it in the authority of your Son, Jesus. And all agreed, said amen. Amen. Okay. Ordinance of the church. Baptism and communion. Uh, we're coming out of Matthew 28 and 19. 28 and 19. Mm -hmm. okay. First Corinthians 11. 23 to 26, and I'll incorporate Acts 2, 41 and 42, but I'm going to read Matthew, started Matthew 28 and just at 19 first. Uh, you have it? Yes, ma'am. Yes. And it reads as follows. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 23 through 26, reads as follows. You got it? Yes. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, take it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. 
After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, do ye show the Lord's death until he comes. Mm -hmm. Baptism and communion. And I can remember in the olden days used to call them sacraments. Mm -hmm. And I can remember my mother being one of the mothers of the church and a deaconess, she always made communion wine that was out of grapes. She had either used blackberry or blueberries. And she would make the bread, and it was unleavened bread. She didn't put any yeast in it. But nevertheless, this was in preparation for the observance of the two ordinances of the church, of the Baptist church. Other churches participate in the Lord's Supper and Communion. Mm -hmm. um, these two ordinances are typically observed on a Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. Uh, does it have to be the first Sunday of the month? Maybe not necessarily because the individual person can have communion daily if they go into the service. I have done so several times, and I do it quite frequently. And personally, I'm going on another 50-day uh, communion. But Christians everywhere observe baptism and the Lord's Supper. So let, let's take a look at communion and where it had its beginning. It had its annual beginnings, the annual celebration of the Passover when Jesus told his disciples to remember his sacrifice as they ate the bread and drank of the wine. And this was uh, Israel was celebrating the sacrifice of the Passover lamb when the death angel would pass over the homes who had the blood of, on the, of the unblemished lamb on the doorpost. Mm -hmm. So Jesus was celebrating this remembrance and of his sacrifice for our sins as he was getting ready to go to the cross. Now, why do we observe these two practices? One, because Jesus instituted the two ordinances himself as he established his church. And he wanted these practices to be continued and remembers uh, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Now, an ordinance is something that is been prescribed or uh, ordered. In this instant, uh, this was prescribed by Jesus Christ and it is practiced by the church, which he is the head of the church. Christ told the church to do so. In obedience to Christ, who is the head, as I said, and our love for Christ and our obedience to his commandments, we practice these two orders, baptism and observing the Lord's Supper. And the New Testament makes it very, very clear that the early church practiced and observed these two ordinances, and that's baptism and the Lord's Supper. 
And you can find the church practicing these two in Acts 2, 41 and 42. And I'll read them and then I'll tell you what was happening. Then they gladly received his word. Mm -hmm. Then they that gladly received his word was baptized. And the same day there were added to the church 3,000 souls. And they continuously, steadfastly, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread in prayer. See, this setting, these two scriptures, is taking place of what the church was continuing to do right after the manifestation of the Pentecost. When the Pentecost and the Holy, God, the Holy Spirit came, on the day of Pentecost, and he made his manifestation, he, the Holy Spirit, in three uh, formats, fire, wind, and sound. So we see that um, the preaching and the teaching was continuing, like I said, after that spectacular manifestation of the Holy Spirit. People were eager for the word to be preached to them by the apostles because they was preaching the true gospel, just as preachers and teachers and apostles and prophets and evangelists are to do today. And people were giving their lives to Christ and they were being baptized. And that's what they continuously adding to the church. And if you notice from the church and the word Christ is preached, people will hear and come to Christ, therefore adding to the church. And then too, just as the apostle stayed in obedience to the great commission, as we use for that first scripture text, Matthew 28 and 19, said, mm -hmm. I want you to go. You cannot stay in your house and not speak and expect the gospel to be spread. The people in China and in and everywhere will not hear unless they are being preached to and taught. He said, go and to all the world. You got to teach them, baptize them. In whose name? The name of the Father, name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Not in my name. I did not go to the cross, neither did any other human being. Only Jesus Christ went to the cross and he shed his precious blood for the atonement of sin. I could not do it. You could not do it. So it took Jesus Christ to do that. So therefore, we are to go, teach, preach, and baptize. And, and we continuously do that in obedience to the command. And what Jesus said, he said, I will be with you to the end of the world. He, we are not alone when we are standing and preaching and teaching the gospel. So now that we have looked at this, let's look at and try, what is baptism? What is baptism? It's not sprinkling, it's not dipping. It is being immersed into the water. And our being immersed is symbolic of Jesus being immersed in the Jordan River. He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. And when Jesus came up out of the water, God, the Holy Spirit, rested upon Jesus' shoulder in the form of a dove. And God, the Father, spoke from heaven and said these words, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He authenticated who Jesus was. And therefore, when we go and baptize, that means by emerge, 
And some churches like to dip, some people like to sprinkle, but me and this one is going to emerge. You're going in the water if you hadn't been already baptized. You're going in and be come up out of the water. If you're going to do it like Jesus did it, that's his symbolic. So any other point of being emerged is symbolic of Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Because just as he went down, in the water. He went down in the grave. He got up on Sunday morning. And when he went and died on the cross, all of us who was in Christ went down, died with him. And on Sunday morning, we rose with him. And we have learned earlier that it is Jesus Christ who baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. We had that lesson or that message. Okay. Now, let me say this before I move on. That once we come up out of the world, we are all believers identify with Christ, his death and his resurrection, because we have become new creatures in him. We are no more sin or aliens alienated from God the Father. We are now have been born into the body of Christ, the church, and in God's kingdom. And in your spare time, just read Romans 6 and 3 through 5. Read those. They took four, just what I'm saying. And Colossians 2 and 12, that all believers being dead to sin and was raised to Christ, to a new life, raised with Christ, but a new life and one of righteousness. We are no more sinners, but we are sinners saved by, 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 by baptism, by Christ, saved by grace. Let me get that right. Baptism is a public display telling the world that yes, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior and have received forgiveness for my sin through Jesus Christ shed blood. So baptism is important, very important. And I can remember if I can say this, that when I finally accepted Christ, I accepted him at an early age, as my savior. And dad said, well, you're going to have to go in the pool. And I said, no problem. They had been taught that Jesus was baptized. So if my savior could be baptized, so could I. And as we all take that, this one, not just because it's mine, but it's the right attitude to take. If my savior was baptized, I can be baptized because I'm identifying with him I'm dying to sin with him, and I'm being raised with him to a life of righteousness. I'm no longer uh, the person I used to be. See, Christ took my unrighteousness. He took all of our unrighteousness and gave us his righteousness because of love. And he loved us so much. So we have an understanding of why we are baptized and why his baptism is so important and one of the ordinances in the church. So since we got that clear, let's look at the Lord's Supper or communion. Jesus Christ instituted the Lord's Supper himself, just like he did baptism. He did so when he ate his last meal with his disciples as part of the Jewish Passover. Okay. And what was in that that was unleavened bread? Uh, in my this reference that how my mother used to make the bread for communion bread, or as it was said, sacrament bread, okay? 
It symbolizes this unleavened bread. Let me make that perfectly clear. Symbolizes the purity of Christ as he was without sin. And you can support that in Hebrews 4 and 15. So then he was appeared in without sin. Therefore, his body was the unblemished sacrificial lamb that God the Father required to, ret to atone our sins. See, God the Father needed somebody who was without sin but human. Jesus Christ was both. He was human and divine. How so? Because he was born of a woman who a virgin birth of Mary. A Mary and God the Holy Spirit was his father. So he was both human and divine. He met all of the requirements that were required to make this one time song sin atone for the world and atone sin he did. The fruit of the vine is too symbolic of Christ's shed blood, that he was shed for the sins of the world. And as I just said, to make his one-time sin atonement. See, his sacrifice and the sin atonement was different from the earthly priest. The earthly priest had to go get in and and the confession and make a, atone for their own sin before they could go and atone for anybody else's people's sin. And this had this ritual occurred every year. But whereas when Jesus went to the cross on that Friday, that was a one time. That was a one time deed. Okay. Now, as I said, the blood, the grape, the juice, wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And they, they said the fruit of the vine but was actually crushed grapes. And that symbolism is still important today. And that's why when we are partaking of the Lord's Supper on first Sunday morning, it is very important. It is obeying the commandments by Christ. And he tells us himself as a remembrance of his sacrifice, his presence and his return. God is always present. Christ is always present with us because the Holy Spirit, his spirit lives in us and he is coming back. We don't know when, that's not our job. Our job is to be prepared. So when he returns, we'd be ready to go back with it. And I had a question there. Will you be ready? Every, every believer, and I'm encouraging all unbelievers to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. So when he returns, they will not be left out of the church. Yes. I won't be ready because we have to live every day as if he's coming back today. And when he was asked, when he was here on earth, when was he coming? They, he told him, I don't know. Only the Father knows. But you just be ready. And one other point I want to make. Uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Uh, is divine as they were given by God to assist us in declaring and proclaiming the gospel and to motivate all to believe in him, accept his son as our personal savior, and to live a Christian life. See, Christ wants uh, that his perfect will is for us all to be saved. But God, being all known, knew that so many was going to reject his spiritual invitation and to accept his son as our Savior and, that, and be reconciled back to him. 
but still in all, that spiritual invitation remains open as he has asked his believers, he has commanded his believers, preachers, teachers, and all, to go and teach and preach so the gospel can spread worldwide. And the apostles obeyed that command. And we see today there's so many billions of human humanity, people who believe who are Christians and live in the Christian life. And so many are still proclaiming the gospel, the good news of salvation. They still preaching and teaching Christ and saying there is salvation in Jesus Christ. So, yes, and living a Christian life, we are telling the world who we are and to whom we belong. We are in the body of Christ. We are members of God's royal kingdom. We have royal blood flowing through our veins because of Jesus Christ and his atoning works on the cross. Yes, we are somebody. We are children of God. We are blessed by God. We are loved by God. And we are saved by Jesus Christ. And we are kept by God, the Holy Spirit. And let me encourage you today, and I'm almost finished, as we partake of these two ordinances, baptism and communion. Baptized, being baptized, we have made up our mind. We have answered the call to accept Jesus as our personal Savior. And we have said, yes, I'm going down into the water as Jesus did. He went down into the belly of the grave, but he did not stay there. And I'm so glad he didn't. And he got up that Sunday morning, that third day morning, as he promised he would. He didn't get up with some power, but he got up with all power. And there again, I'm glad he did. And we all are glad that he did because he has the power to save, he has the power to heal, and the power to deliver. And one thing about it, he walks with us every single day of our lives. And as I said earlier, He's present with us. He blesses us every single day beyond measures mm -hmm. because so many didn't wake up this morning. Mm -hmm. But if we are still alive, if we my body may be racking with pain, but we are still alive, then we can say, thank you, Jesus. And mm -hmm. if we can move without any pain, that's the double said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. He has supplied all our needs. Mm -hmm. we, can say, we must say thank you, Jesus. And when we take partake in the communion that's going to be administered so many places today, Shepherd Ministers Day is coming, uh, we do so with a cleansed internal spirit and holy devotion to what Christ has done for us. We are partaking of his broken body that break, and his shed blood that won. For when he went to the cross for us, and I'll say again, neither one of us could die for our sin, but we have a God that loved us so much that he gave all that he had yeah. to reconcile us, to bring us back into balance with him. So we
doesn't take communion lightly. We should not take it if we have a ill feeling against somebody. And we just discussed in our Sunday school lesson, love has to rule the day. Love is of God, and love is the tapestry that holds us together. And our love for Christ, when his atoning work calls us, or should cause us, and it must cause us to take and partake in this with a reverence and obedience and thanksgiving for what he done for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only believers who have been baptized can partake in the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. Only believers. Because you don't want to take it into a damnation to your own soul. Yes. So, as I close with this, the only two ordinances of Christ's church is baptism and the Lord's Supper. They were issued by Christ. They have been carried out by the church and must continue to be carried out by the church because we are doing it in remembrance of what he done for us, providing salvation for all who believe. And to the unbelievers, I say to you today, hear the voice of the Lord. And he says, whosoever believe in my son, Jesus Christ, and accept him as your personal savior, you shall, that's our guarantee, be saved. And to the believer, continue walking in the righteousness of Christ and let our light so shine that the world will see the manifestation of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in us. Because there is no other Savior other than Jesus Christ. And the only way to heaven is that we must be saved. And let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your son, Jesus. And Father, we thank you for this day. Yes. As all churches is going to participate in communion as a commemoration of your son Jesus, death, his burial, and his resurrection. He died for us, and he rose for us, and we rose with him. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God be with you. God be with you until we meet again. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right. That concludes our message for today. Amen. You all have a